thank God for leading me to the Love Center. And it gave me a new outlook on life, responsibility. A pastor that was not afraid to show you the real world, but give you that spiritual leadership. I was used to religion, but here he was talking about relationship. He helped teach me what it meant to be a dad, uh, to be a husband, and to praise the Lord faithfully. Here I learned how to pray and how to love. 30 years of imparting knowledge and information and love and caring. I thank God for the entire Love Center family. The Love Center is forever a part of our lives. These are the things that we are keeping in prayer this week at the Love Center. Take a look at what happened. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. We cannot allow for this to happen. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. Officials are installing barbed wire barriers along the Darien Gap to deter U.S. bound migrants. Despite new barbed wire barriers along the Darien Gap, many migrants continue their perilous journey. There have been renewed deadly Israeli airstrikes on Gaza this morning. The Hamas-run health ministry says at least 70 people have been killed and nearly 300 injured in what witnesses say were three airstrikes near a displacement camp near the city of Khan Yunis. In 1920s Baltimore, a black high school student was punished for playing a prank on his classmates by having to read the U.S. Constitution. The punishment would inspire him to go on and become the leading civil rights lawyer of his time. That young man was Thurgood Marshall. As an attorney, his first big win was in the case Murray versus Pearson in 1936, when student Donald Gaines Murray was denied admission to the University of Maryland because he was black. Marshall argued that the school had violated the 14th Amendment, which guarantees Americans equal protection under the law. The judge ruled that Murray could attend, but should be separated from his fellow white students. It was a victory that resonated with Marshall. He had been denied admission to the same university five years before. He joined the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People as a lawyer in 1936. Working for over 20 years, he won a staggering 29 cases before the Supreme Court. But one of his greatest victories was the landmark case Brown versus the Board of Education, where the court agreed with his argument that separate educational facilities for students was inherently unequal and schools should be fully integrated. In 1967, President Lyndon B. Johnson nominated him to the Supreme Court, making Marshall the first black person to serve on the highest court in the land. There, he continued to protect the rights of Americans until his retirement in 1991. We had a couple of hundred children, I, I was about to say bad children, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> children from vacation Bible school that we had rounded up on two old school buses. I put a barbecue pit, some footballs and baseball mitts inside the bus, and we went to the park in Bondsville and grabbed other folks too. Over and over, with all the talk in the street and craziness, Black people saying we don't need organized religion and uh, we don't need the church and we walk away from God and all that stuff. I need for you to go the opposite direction so there'll be one great big Negro mm. We need God, we need the church, and we need each other. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. So I'm going to ask you if you ain't already. In somebody's church, come back home in your home. You can see we're here holding on, but if you were here, we'd be like we were that time when the kids were on the bus, crawling all over the place, having a wonderful time doing 
what you do when you are together yes. and strong and God is in the midst. Yes. Somebody feeling that somebody's not, but if you are, let's make that happen Amen. and see what God will do. And lean over and tell somebody, he ain't doing nothing like there. Practice with me one time just so we can say it to the world. The world said we don't need God. We black people don't need the church no more. Look at them like this and say, Negro, please. Negro, please.